Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here from Virtualization How To, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm sharing killer home lab projects that you can build in a weekend. Projects that are not just fun, but will seriously level up your skills and your home lab. Whether you're just starting out or you have been self hosting for quite some time, these are practical, real world projects that you can actually knock out in a weekend. And even better, they solve real problems that you'll run into as you grow your lab and as you take on new job roles in production environments. Let's dive right in. First up, build a Docker container host and start learning containers today. Honestly, this was one of the best moves that I made just a few years back. Once I got a Docker host up and running, containers became a central part of my self-hosted setup. They're lightweight, they save resources, and they open the door to running so many awesome services at home, using less hardware, generating less heat, and all of those things mean using less electricity. When you stand up your own Docker host, you'll get hands-on with running images, using Docker Compose, running multi-container apps, learning how to manage volumes, Docker networks. All of these things are a foundation to even bigger projects like Kubernetes. Next, once you are familiar with Docker and Docker Compose, why not level this up with spinning up your first Kubernetes cluster? After you get comfortable with Docker, Kubernetes is the natural progression. You can start simple with Minikube or build out a lightweight production grade cluster using K3S or MicroKates, which is what I'm using right now. This will teach you how to manage containers at scale, use persistent storage, namespaces, ingress controllers, deploy apps with Helm, and it's one of the most valuable skills that you can learn today. Kubernetes is literally used everywhere, including on-premises environments, cloud environments, so getting your hands dirty in your home lab with Kubernetes is one of the best projects you can tackle. Number three is automate your infrastructure with Ansible and Terraform. Automation is key to any serious home lab. Setting up Ansible and Terraform lets you provision VMs, install software, manage configurations consistently all from infrastructure's code. Plus, you'll start learning DevOps principles like GitOps, Pipeline, CICD, Workflows. You'll learn how much faster and cleaner your setups can be once you start automating those things. And you're going to get a hands-on experience with code repos like GitLab, Git and all of those types of things. We're going to look at that next. Number four is self-host your own Git repository. And that's a great weekend project using something like Git or GitLab. You don't have to rely on GitHub. Self-hosting your own code repo gives you complete control over that code. You can do this with Git or GitLab. I'm currently using GitLab, and the reason for that is that it has a native CICD pipeline, code scanning, and also you can host your own image repo for your containers that you built. This is a critical skill for any IT pro or developer. So getting that project in your home lab, your own repo, is a great way to get hands-on with those technologies. Well, number five is stand up a a reverse proxy with Nginx Proxy Manager. If you're running multiple services, you'll quickly need a way to manage SSL certificates and expose services cleanly and efficiently. Nginx Proxy Manager makes this super easy. And importantly for beginners, it has a web interface that makes configuration a simple point and click process. And what this means is you'll have one IP address and answers to multiple host names. And this type of solution can also handle automatic certificates like using Let's Encrypt certificates to secure all of your connections to self-hosted services. By the end of the weekend, your apps will be TLS secured, publicly accessible behind a reverse proxy if that's what you choose to do. This allows you to experiment and get familiar with those concepts using something like Nginx Proxy Manager. And once you get familiar with that solution that is easier, you can graduate up to using something like Traffic, which is more challenging, but it allows allows you to do more in terms of infrastructure as code. Number six is to try a new hypervisor, something like Proxmox or XCPNG. VMware's recent licensing changes have pushed a lot of us to explore alternatives. The changes with VMUG, the doing away of free ESXi, the bringing back of free ESXi, we don't know what is going on with Broadcom. Trying something different is a great weekend project, and it's not difficult to install something like Proxmox. Proxmox and X 
XCP and G are both open source platforms that can easily replace VMware in your home lab environment. Proxmox also has become arguably the most popular hypervisor in the home lab, and rightfully so. It's free, it's easy to use, and it gets the job done. Why not try it out? You'll be surprised at just how quickly you'll get up to speed with something like Proxmox or XCPNG. Number seven is to set up TrueNAS Scale as an open source storage solution. Every home lab needs good storage. Setting up TrueNAS Scale is a perfect weekend project to make use of unused hardware that you may have lying around or something else. When you configure TrueNAS Scale, you'll get a fully featured NAS solution, advanced redundancy with ZFS file system, and even the ability to run VMs and containers natively to TrueNAS Scale. These NAS operating systems are not just for storage these days. You can literally run your entire home lab on something like TrueNAS Scale. Again, running your VMs and containers directly from that storage solution. Number eight is build up your networking with VLANs and segmentation. If you're still running a flat network in your home lab, don't despair. That's a great weekend project. Start segmenting traffic for your different devices in your home network. Start with things like IoT devices, servers, cameras, and general LAN use. Not only does this boost security, but it also helps with network performance and also it makes troubleshooting much easier. And it's a great way to manage your entire network, to have that logical separate between different services and different device types. Number nine is monitor your network with Prometheus and Grafana. Both of these solutions give you visibility into your home lab and having that visibility is really critical when you have multiple services, multiple VMs, multiple containers and deploying Prometheus and Grafana is not difficult and it gives you both a powerful as well as open source solution to do monitoring of those various resources. In just a weekend, you can have a full dashboard showing node health, container resource usage, and even have custom alerts to things like email or something like Telegram. I monitor my Proxmox environment, VMware vSphere, containers, container hosts, and other important resources in the home lab with these tools. Finally, number 10 is run a disaster recovery recovery tests with your backups. You may have backups and that is excellent. You should have some type of backup solution even for your lab. Have you actually tested those backups? One of the most valuable projects that you can do is simulate a full recovery of a virtual machine or a container or your persistent volumes for a container. Spend a weekend practicing restores for some of those critical VMs or containers. And once you see that those actually work, you're going to sleep a lot better. It's going to give you comfort knowing that you actually do have a functional working secondary copy of your data if things hit the fan. One last bonus. Make it a weekend project to document your home lab. And documenting your home lab not only helps you to learn faster, it makes managing your home lab a lot easier. Check out my last week's video showing how to document your home lab and the tools that you may want to check out for this task. So there you have it, 10 killer home lab projects that you can build in a weekend plus a bonus project. If you've been struggling to come up with what to learn next in your home lab, hopefully this gives you some exciting ideas perhaps to dive into if you're looking for your next project. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss the latest home lab projects, tutorials, reviews, and just cool stuff that we feature here. And as always, let me know in the comments which project are you planning to build this weekend. I'd love to hear what you have going on in your home lab. Also, I would like to let you guys know about an exciting project that I am working on for training content dedicated to home lab environments. Home Lab Explorers is a new school learning environment that will feature discussions, video content, ebooks, and many other useful resources for home lab enthusiasts. If you're just getting started, don't know where to start, or if you already have a lab and you just simply want to level up or have a discussion with others who are passionate about the same thing. Be sure to join this new group on school. I will have a link in the description. Well, stay safe, guys. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.